Kia ora, and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for PPD June 2024. The Aotearoa property market continues to stutter along in 2024, with sale volumes holding up firm, but property values showing further weakness. Nationwide, sales volumes are up 14% year on year, but values are down for the second month in a row, after falling 0.2% in May. Admittedly, April's fall was even smaller at 0.1%, but importantly, it's a stark contrast from the 3.2% lift over the six months from October 2023 to the end of March 2024, at an average of 0.5% monthly growth. Concerns about the dreaded dead cat bounce have surfaced, especially with little sign of change to the key fundamentals in the short term. Those fundamentals are higher supply in the form of listings on the market and constrained demand due to stubbornly high inflation, meaning monetary policy remains contractionary. In other words, the Reserve Bank is holding firm with the high OCR, as reiterated in their May Monetary Policy Committee meeting. Following that, there are now very few, if any, economic commentators forecasting a fall in the OCR in 2024. Of course, the key issue stemming from tight monetary policy is continued high mortgage rates, which are challenging for buyers across the spectrum. Reduced job security and emerging actual job losses are headwinds for the housing market too. Below the nationwide statistics, recently our main centres are seeing contrasting form, with Tamaki Makoto Auckland continuing to lead the weaker side of the equation, as values fell away 0.8% in May, followed by Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington dropping 0.6%, and Tauranga down 0.5%. Meanwhile, Values in both Kirikiriroa Hamilton and Ōtipoti Dunedin increased by 0.8% and Ōtotahi Christchurch by 0.5%. Similar variability was evident across the other main urban areas, with values in Whanganui, Rotorua and the Kapiti Coast all experiencing 1.8% growth in May, while values in Whakatu, Nelson, fell by 1% and Te Awakairangi Ke Uta, Upper Hutt, dropped 0.9%. The market dynamics appear to favour buyers, but a review of CoreLogic's latest buy classification series shows no particular single buyer group is benefiting most from the current conditions. Activity across the first two quarters of 2024 has been relatively consistent and finely balanced, though there are hints of a resurgence in owner-occupiers moving house. On the face of it, the government's recent announcement to do away with the first-home buyer grants should be detrimental to their future activity. However, if first-home buyers' resilient determination to get into the market remains, then it's unlikely to have a meaningful impact across the board. Those buyers are likely to take the extra time to get their deposit, adjust their housing expectations down, or most probably a bit of both. The removal of the grants was ultimately part of the government's expenditure adjustment, highlighted in their budget release at the end of May. Another key feature of the budget was the confirmation of as-promised tax cuts, and with it, questions of the potential impact on inflation. In terms of housing market implications, this was probably the only real point of interest, as homeowners yearn for inflation to slow, and with it, the OCR. Tax cuts are typically inflationary, so it'll be all about the restrained fiscal spending balancing those tax cuts out. Our struggling economy and weakening employment will also play a part, but it's hard to ignore that inflation remains the number one focus. Aside from the Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Review committing to their war on inflation, they also released the finalised conditions for the formal introduction of the debt-to-income lending limits. Nothing changed from the original proposal, which is that up to 20% of owner-occupiers will be able to borrow more than six times their income, while up to 20% of investors will be able to borrow more than seven times their income. Given lending levels are well below these limits, they're unlikely to have an impact on the market once they're introduced on the 1st of July. They're all about controlling the next market upswing, which as we can see from lending through the COVID times, could serve as quite the constraint on demand longer term. Throughout most of 2021, over 35% of investor loans exceeded a DTI ratio of seven. July will also bring a loosening of the loan to value ratio limits, which could see a lift in demand, albeit only a small lift, due to those high interest rates limiting how much debt people are willing or able to take on. We'll also see the shortening of the bright line test on 1st of July, the effective capital gains tax for investors. We've calculated there are up to 54,000 properties which will benefit from the shortening of the test, most purchased in 2020 and 2021. And with some investors facing difficult cash flow positions, a portion of those may look to materialise any capital gain they're sitting on. This could see a further lift in listed supply and less upward pressure on prices. 
To keep track of all the latest housing market activity and macroeconomic insights, be sure to follow our news updates on the CoreLogic NZ social channels, including LinkedIn, Instagram, X or Facebook. Don't forget to download our latest monthly chart pack and subscribe to the New Zealand Property Market Podcast on all good podcast players. Mā te wa.